Hey guys, so I wanted to do a quick tutorial on just the very basics of setting up a custom character in uh, Unreal Engine 4, and then we'll uh, do another series where I talk about setting up a more advanced uh, rigged character with more functionality and features. Um, but I think that this can be a pretty quick tutorial that's kind of just like a general introduction to how this stuff works and the important details of things that you need to know to get something functioning. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new um, project. And um, I can use either the, for this example, I could use the flying, I could use a twin stick shooter, I could probably use the vehicle, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do the flying one. Um, and I'm gonna call this uh, UFO test. And I'm not gonna use starter content because I don't want it to be filled with fluff. Um, let's save this project I was working on before. So what we're going to do, um, just to give you an idea of what's going on here um, while that project is coming up, is I'm going to take this really simple UFO model that I made in like one minute, um, and I'm going to replace the model in the flying project with that model. Um, and so there's a few things that I need to keep an eye out for. Uh, one of them is that I want to actually take a look at this, this model. Um, so what I'm going to try to do is I need to figure out some information about this character or the, you know, this, uh, this spacecraft to make sure that I know the things that I need to know about it to, to replace it effectively. Um, so for one thing, um, I'm going to go into the flying folder. I'm going to go to meshes and I'm going to look at the UFO. So the first thing that's important to note is that the UFO is a static mesh. Um, it has a simple collision system, um, which is just kind of like a, compound object. It has a pretty basic material um, and its size, its approximate size is 125 by 100 by 56. Um, so if I want something to look roughly the same, I got to make sure that my UFO is going to match that size and shape relatively well. So um, I am going to quickly actually just make a box that I can use as a, as a guide. Um, so I'm going to drag a box that's like kind of close to the size. Um, and then I'm look at this and it's actually okay. So it's like, it's like a, that's a 120 um, by 27. So yeah, so uh, basically because I can see this is roughly 100 units. Um, let me let me do that again just to, to make sure that it's clear. Um, I'm not being super precise, but basically so it looks like it's actually really very, very close because uh, it's about 122 to 125. Uh, units, so I actually just kind of guessed correctly and actually worked out pretty well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this character because I know that the, the character doesn't need any bones, it doesn't need any special details. Um, I'm just going to export this model, bring it into Unreal, and then replace the one that's in there. Um, so I'm going to go to Export Selection. I usually use Export Selection, I don't have to, but it's really it's just a way of making sure that I'm not exporting any junk information uh, from the project. Um, so then I'm going to go, I'm going to make sure I use smoothing groups. I'm actually not going to export animation because this is a static mesh. Um, and I'm going to call this SM underscore UFO. And uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my UFO project. And so I have my flying meshes here. I'm going to make a new folder in the content called UFO. And in this case, I, I don't need to bring in any textures, but if I had textures, I could bring those in along with this. Um, I'm just going to bring my SM UFO into the scene. I'm not importing a skeletal. I'm actually going to go ahead and auto generate collision because that'll probably work out fine. Um, then I don't really need to worry too much about the rest of this. Um, I'll say import materials and textures, but um, it's just going to bring in a basic material. Um, in this case, it's a Lambert one, which is a sign that I didn't really uh, plan this out correctly. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you always want to name your materials and make sure it's actually something that you want. Um, but okay, so basically I've got this, uh, this model here. Um, I'm going to quickly go in and make a change to uh, the material so that it looks a little bit nicer. Um, rather than making it um, this gray, I'm going to double click on it, 
I'm going to make it kind of a red color. Um, hit OK. So it'll be kind of like the red version of the uh, flying object that we have here. And then I can look at that UFO, and I can also see that it has pretty much the same kind of collision as the other one has. Um, it actually came out to be a little bit smaller. It's 100 by, 100 by 29, um, but that's not really a big deal. Um, but so let's go ahead and play the game really quick, and let's let's see what, what we're shooting for. So if I go ahead and hit play, then uh, I can pilot this craft by uh, hitting the WASD keys. Um, and then it looks like a uh, space bar is what I use to control um, the thrusters. And um, so in a, in a very basic sense, this is a, this is a functioning game. Um, and what would be very, very cool um, is that if I was making a mod of this scene, like what I could do is I could change these obstacles into being like buildings and put like a city street texture um, and then I could extend things out into the distance a little further so that you can see an environment. Um, but, okay, but the first thing, the only thing I'm really concerned about right now is replacing this model. So, um, so I'm going to hit Shift F1, stop. Make sure, no, there we go. Um, okay, so then let's figure out what we need to do to actually replace this uh, model. And so basically, um, I used a blueprint template, which is probably the easiest way for you guys um, to tackle it if you're just starting out. Um, but uh, so there's two ways of accessing the blueprint. One is to click on the model and then to go to edit blueprint. Um, then the other way is really simple. It's just uh, to find the, the blueprint that's relevant. So um, in the flying BP, if you go to blueprints, um, it's this one called Flying Pawn. Um, and so you can either open it by double clicking that, or you can go to the Edit Blueprint and open Blueprint Editor. Um, and then you go to the viewport. Um, and then you'll see this nifty model here. This kind of goofy looking spaceship. Um, but we'll replace it with our even goofier looking one. Um, so if I click on this model, um, you'll see that it's, uh, it's called a plane mesh, which means that uh, it was just named um, generically here at the top. Um, but basically, there's two properties that we want to look out for. There's the static mesh and the material. But really, well, all we have to worry about is uh, that static mesh, uh, because what I can do is I can take my new UFO mesh, I can select it in the content browser, and then I can plug it in here, and it will automatically replace it. Now, um, there's a few things that I had to watch out for with this. Like, first of all, you want to make sure that your model is always at zero, zero, zero. Um, <coughs> you want to make sure that it uh, has its transformations frozen. Um, so you go to modify freeze transformations. Um, so like if you haven't done that already, you go to modify freeze transformations and that just makes sure that everything is set up to zero, zero, zero and one. Um, and then, uh, and then, yeah, it, it automatically will apply the material that was relevant to that static mesh Though you can override it if you want to. Um, and because this is already set up to function, all of the things that you need here are actually already in place. Um, so you, what you can do is you can just go to this compile button, you can hit it so that there's a check mark there. Um, and then you can jump in and go to play. And yeah, so then that really, that's literally all you have to do um, on the most basic components to set up um, a replacement of the, the player character or the uh, player vehicle or what have you. Um, and so, Hopefully this is a this is helpful as kind of an introduction. Um, just to, to clarify, this is pretty much the exact same process you would use for any of the basic implementations. Um, then the only time this becomes more complicated is when you're looking at situations where you actually have to add in um, character animation. Um, but I have another tutorial that's a little bit longer that goes over that process and shows you what you need to know to get that kind of thing set up. 
Um, so, so yeah, so then basically that's, that's kind of the long and the short of it. Um, you can make the mod uh, for all of your characters um, using a similar process. And so in, uh, in this, uh, it's very, very simple. If you're using a weapon, it's a little bit more complicated, but not terribly so. Um, and then if you use a character, uh, an animated character with a rig, that's going to be the most complicated. But again, it's still not anything too, man too unmanageable. So, um, so yeah, that's it. I um, hope that it provides you a little bit of insight on how to, how to set this stuff up. So, all right, thanks.